Hey, what's up, Unbroken Nation? And you, you said something on another podcast that I wrote down because it was really beautiful and I want you to expound on it. You said, when people are committed to their trauma, it's because they haven't had a place or a person to hold on to it for them. Mm -hmm. And I'd love for yeah. you to talk about that. Well, that's what we do, right? Until we're challenged. This is so insidious and integral to our development, right? And so we end up where we are now. We don't dissect or replay like how we got to where we are. And we never really can because there's so many factors involved. But the truth is until you have a place to hold and put that trauma so that it is not you, right? It's what happened to you. It was the muck that is covering your golden self, right? But it's not you. You're the golden Buddha, right? It's just all this other stuff. And so one of my favorite, pa Paulo Coelho is one of my favorite writers. And I can't even tell you, because I've read every one of his books, I can't even tell you which book this came from, but I've never forgotten this one little line. It was part of a much larger story. But one of the characters was saying to the other, you know, you don't have to believe the story of your life you've been told. You don't have to believe, like you've been told a story through things that happened to you, things loved ones and, and key caregivers said to you about you, the way they reacted to you. You've adopted a story of who you are, what you're capable of, how worthy of love you are, who you are, the story of your life, right? But that's just a story. You don't have to believe the story of your life you've been told, mm. right? You're the golden Buddha that's covered in muck. The muck is not you. You're not the muck. Yeah, that's so true. And, and it's, I don't know if this is held true in your life and your experience, but for me, I, I had to convince myself of that. Mm -hmm. Right. Because there's so much of you look in order to survive difficult times as a child, you know, it's hard for us to understand with the intellect and perspective and of, of an adult, how we felt as a child, right? You have to, it helps to hang out with children <laughs> to see, um, you know, and as a mother, I, I've definitely learned this more acutely than I probably would have if I hadn't been around children as much as I have. But, you know, they, they don't see the world as we do. It's very, you know, their worldview is very limited, obviously, because they're new little humans. And, and so they don't, they either don't question or they come up with these strategies that are all they have available to them with their internal resources at that phase and their understanding of the world at that point in their lives, which is very limited. They come up with a strategy, right? So like in my life, if I, and it also has to do with your personality and I think your soul path, right? So let's, in my family, right? If I said, you know, oh, look, the sky is blue. And my dad said, no, it's not, it's yellow, right? I would say, oh, I must be wrong. What I'm seeing is not real. And my dad's right. So actually what I think is blue is really yellow. I must not be able to tell the color of the sky or I must think, that what I think is blue is actually yellow, right? Because my dad was so scary and, and could be so abusive if you conflicted with the way he wanted to view the world that I learned really early that if I was going to stay safe and if I was going to get his approval and love, his truth was the only one that I could accept, right? My sister had a very different personality. She would be like, fuck you, the sky's blue, you know? And she had her other, she ended up with a lot of other, you know, traumas and dramas than I did. We both had our own journeys to take, right? And we both had our own personalities. But for me, the journey was about one of them. There were many of them, but in this vein, it was about discernment. It was about learning to even see and trust my own truth, right? But I did that in order to survive. I didn't know any better. I was like, okay, you're the one that can beat the shit out of me if I say something to disagree with you. And therefore, you're the only one that can keep me safe. So I'm just going to align with you and give my own truth away, right? The adult me would have never done that. But I was a little child, 
And so we have to have compassion for those parts of ourselves. And we also have to understand that we were doing the very best we could. And we make these unconscious agreements and contracts that if not questioned, remain throughout our adulthood, right? So I became, until I addressed this, I was someone who always second-guessed my choices, who never felt confident in my decisions, who would make a decision about something and immediately question it. Or if I spoke to someone else five minutes later who had a different opinion, my husband would even complain about it in the beginning of our marriage because we would make a decision. And then I would talk to someone else about something and it would come up and they would have a different opinion. And I'd come back to him and be like, you know what, maybe we should... He was like, we just made a decision. Why are you letting this other person? But I couldn't hold on to my own truth because I had learned very early that that wasn't safe. 